Five years ago, the Kengen Ashura anime was released, and now the final season. A journey and tournament that we will never forget. An anime that is not perfect with large amounts of cut content, but this time they even added some. Therefore, by the end of today's video, you will understand all of this. But take note, this was an amazing experience. A series that introduced me to my favourite manga of all time, and even helped this channel reach its first 10k subscribers. Welcome to my final Kengen Ashura review, and the conclusion of the anime. Throughout this season, we got key fights such as Oma vs Cosmo, Wakatsuki vs Mutaba, Rei vs Kuroki, Kanogito vs Sen, the conclusion of Kiru vs Oma outside of the tournament, which had some extended fight scenes that was directly connected to the reveals in regards to both of their flashbacks, providing an extended fight scene in the anime between both of the Nikos. Following that, we had Oma vs Wakatsuki, all the reveals about Yamashita's ancestor, Kuroki vs Kanogito, where we got the legend revealed of Gaimukaku and some of the truth about the Nikko style, and then the final of the tournament, Kuroki vs Takita Oma, with Oma's supposed death alongside some other things showing what the characters are doing since the tournament. So when it comes to major cut content this season, there's really only two things that you guys need to take note of. What happened to Kiru Setsuna and the final scene of the Kengen Ashura manga which was outright removed from the anime here. So after the reveal that Yamashita is beginning his own corporation officially, we cut to black Switching to Hong Kong where we see these three individuals. These guys haven't appeared at any point in Kang and Ashura, but these are part of the group known as the Worm, which has been mentioned and shown within the Kang and Ashura anime, but a lot of stuff for them was outright removed. But we have them talking about how Tokita Oma didn't make it and how that was a goddamn waste of time. If you watch my video going over whether Tokita Oma is really alive, you'll understand the meaning of that. But we soon learned that they were on the tournament island as well, taking out these people part of Hayami's goons who were, as we saw, part of the worm. The hooded one took out the guy Cosmo was fighting, and then the person Oma destroyed was killed by this dude, getting rid of any loose ends. Providing a close-up of the big guy sitting here, where we see that he has the same eyes as the Kurei clan, who's saying that we've killed Long Min and Ranjo, and Tokita Oma is dead. Looking at the hooded guy saying, now you're the only hair left to the Nico style. Concluding the series with this guy saying, they were never the tiger vessels, I'm the only tiger we need, concluding the Kangen Ashura manga, which directly connects to the sequel series beginning two years later, known as Kangen Omega, where these guys make up the main villains at first. Therefore, the fact that this was cut from the anime probably means they're not really planning on making an anime for the Kangen Omega manga anytime soon. Of course, it's possible and I do predict it will happen in the future. It's probably going to be a few years though, unless another studio decides to pick up the Kangen Omega series and makes it into an anime. It will most likely depend on how well Kangen Ashura performs on Netflix which based on the past, it does quite well and I don't see them stopping the adaption of the series. When it comes to the Kang and Omega manga, there's more than enough content. Now having a chapter count surpassing Kang and Ashura with weekly chapters that us in the Discord have been enjoying for five plus years now. Also being a key thing I provide on this channel, Kang and Omega videos, so subscribe if you wanna see more of that stuff. But coming back to the anime, one of the strangest things this season is how they refer to martial arts as inner tactics throughout. I don't know whose idea it was, but I definitely don't like it. But the things I did like, of course, were the fights. What the Kangen Ashura anime pretty much dedicates all its time to. They cut content from various other places to focus more on the fights, which is probably for the best considering the purpose of an anime about a fighting manga like this. So the first one of the season, Oma vs Cosmo was definitely done very well. I enjoyed every aspect of Oma's water caster coming out, and while yes, it was a slower paced fight, the anime allowed it to potentially be more engaging than what it was in the manga. Alongside setting up the main purpose of the season, 
the season for Takit Oma as he was pretty much unconscious for the majority of the previous. Therefore, after that, we had Wakatsuki vs Mutaba. This fight was very fast in the anime, only being about 80% of one episode. Very fast paced, wasn't a long fight in the manga as well. The ending was a disappointment to a lot of people when it first came out, but still, I enjoyed it. Seeing the inner tactics, can't believe I said that, but in another way was cool to get revealed for both fighters. Following that, we had the fight I was probably the most disappointed with, Rei vs Kuroki. In the manga version of this, the impact panels of Kuroki beating up Rei were definitely far more intense than what we got in the anime, and even the portrayal of Rei's insane speed wasn't really to the same degree that was depicted in the manga, at least for me. So this was probably the most disappointing fight when it comes to the anime's adaptation. That funny enough was a similar case with Q vs Kuroki in the previous season, so just unfortunate. We did had Kano Yito vs Hatsumi Sen. I'm glad they included all the scenes of Kano training with the previous Fang to prepare for this fight, reinventing himself to demonstrate the true power of the Fang, while also highlighting the greatness of Hatsumi Sen. But yes, this fight had a lot of build up and didn't really deliver even in the manga, but still highlighted how much of a monster Kano Gita is. I was disappointed that they didn't include this specific panel adapted into the anime or maybe I missed it but I was waiting for this and I didn't get it really delivered for how I wanted it. Definitely one of my favourite from the manga that wasn't really highlighted in the anime. We then had something I was very glad and think they did very well with. The whole Kiryu vs Oma stuff outside of the tournament. It was very short in the manga but I believe the anime actually expanded on it quite a bit. The conclusion and key aspects of it were the same, it's just the fight was extended in the anime which I believe should be the main aim of a successful anime adaptation. If they can expand on the fights and make them better, that is simply a huge dub, which I believe they succeeded for Kiryu vs Oma. Alongside that, the whole flashback was a little bit hard to understand in the anime, so I will explain what really happened to Takita Nikko now. So the other Nikko, who I'm going to refer to as the Tiger Nikko, implanted or had given Oma the advance. Then. Upon training Kiryu, he showed Kiryu how to activate the advance within Oma, the full version where he can't really control himself. Apart from that, he told Kiryu to go seek out Genzan to learn the Koei style techniques. Proceeding to get Kiryu to pull up on Oma, fight him, activate the full crazy advance within him so Kiryu could see his god. Then Oma's master had to fight the crazy amped up version of Oma. He got somewhat injured but was able to stop him. Then the Tiger Nico proceeded to pull up and fight Oma's master. This is all we got when it comes to the manga version of this in Kangen Ashura, meaning they actually expanded on the fight scene in the anime which I'm glad they did. Following that, supposedly Oma's master defeated the other Nico but survived escaping from the scene. Then shortly after that, Gensan arrived, the master of Kiryu from his perspective, seeing that this guy is virtually fighting his student, proceeding to fight the injured master of Oma and kill him in a high difficulty battle, meaning Takita Nikko had to fight enraged crazy Oma, another Nikko, and then Gensan right after one another. That's how he died. Apart from that, the Kangen Omega story has now revealed the truth about all of the Tokita Nikos and what happened with Gar Bikaku. But coming back to the fights, we had Oma vs Wakatsuki. I love their goofy smile when they were talking to one another before they clash. And then the fight itself highlighting how much a monster Wakatsuki truly was during this time. His dominance over Oma was absolutely crazy and definitely reminded me to respect our Waka boy forever. The Demon's Bane was absolutely crazy and then the moment where Wakatsuki was still able to get up was pretty incredible and I think they did this fight pretty well. We then had all the reveals about Yamashita's ancestor. That was all good, I'm glad they included that. Bringing us to the fan favourite fight in the series or the one most people agree as the best fight of all time, Kuroki Gensai vs Kano Gito. If this was your first time experiencing this, let me know your thoughts down below. A crazy outcome, crazy moments at every point. It was a little slower paced in the anime version 
due to various moments they need to explain certain things. An aspect where experiencing it via the manga is much more fast paced and definitely a better experience as a whole. But still, when it comes to the anime, I think they did Kuroki vs Kano well. The betrayal of pre-initiative with them vanishing through each other's blows was very badass and I'm glad they included pretty much every aspect of that fight. Apart from one thing, in the manga we have a moment where Kuroki outright claims he considers Kano Gito an equal. I believe that was cut from the anime for whatever reason so unfortunate. We then had the final of the tournament, Kuroki Gensai vs Oma. I enjoyed every aspect of that, particularly the impact blows from Kuroki during the clashes, Oma's advance coming out and then the final moment where Oma combined his advance with the ultimate technique of the Nico style, Demon's Bane in the manga or Demon Slaughter in the anime. A crazy moment but the manga version I would say was a little bit more meme worthy as many of you guys probably know. And then the ending with Oma's death I believe was done fairly well. Some things were cut such as reactions etc. But other things were added such as Kurekala sitting inside the arena wondering what to do with herself. But if you guys have read Kang and Omega or know what happens, you have an explanation for a lot of this stuff. So once again, I'm recommending reading the Kangen Ashura manga from chapter 1 to the end to get a full story. And then picking up Kangen Omega and enjoying the ongoing greatness like all of us. Check out this playlist with all of my Kangen videos, close to 300 in there right now. Shout out to these members of the channel, these are absolute mad lads. Subscribe for more, check out the official partner of the channel, Gamersubs with a 10% discount, free samples etc. Link in the description. That's it guys, peace.